The presumed April Fool's Day prank by Google turned out to be a revolutionary change in the world of email. Greetings everyone, today we will be delving into the fascinating world of Google's Gmail. When Gmail was introduced on April Fool's Day in 2004, many initially dismissed it as a mere prank. Little did they know that this free email service would revolutionise the way we communicate. With a generous 1 GB of storage per account, Gmail provided users with a staggering 250 to 500 times more storage than its competitors, Yahoo and Microsoft's webmail services. But that's not all. Gmail also incorporated Google's cutting-edge search technology, making it easier than ever to find specific emails. Additionally, it introduced the concept of automatically threading together related conversations, streamlining communication like never before. Fast forward to today and Gmail boasts an impressive 1.8 billion active accounts, each offering a substantial 15 GB of free storage. And that's not all. Gmail also includes Google Photos and Google Drive, providing users with even more storage options. So, without any further delay, let's dive right into our discussion. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the co-founders of Google, had a penchant for practical jokes, to the extent that they started introducing absurd concepts every April Fool's Day shortly after establishing their company over 25 years ago. In one instance, Google advertised a position for a research center named Copernicus, located on the moon. On another occasion, the company announced its intention to introduce a scratch-and-sniff functionality to its search engine. The continuous and exaggerated nature of the jokes became so ingrained in people's perception that they simply brushed them off as yet another instance of Google's mischievousness. This is precisely why Page and Brin made the decision to reveal something on April Fool's Day that would have been deemed utterly implausible two decades ago. Gmail, a complimentary service that offered a generous one gigabyte of storage per account, may seem unremarkable in today's era of one terabyte iPhones. However, during its inception, this amount of email capacity appeared ludicrously excessive, capable of accommodating approximately 13,500 emails before reaching maximum capacity. In comparison, the leading webmail services operated by Yahoo and Microsoft could only hold a mere 30 to 60 emails, making Gmail's storage capacity a staggering 250 to 500 times greater. In addition to the significant advancement in storage capacity, Gmail was also equipped with Google's cutting-edge search technology, enabling users to effortlessly locate specific information within their archived emails, photos and other personal data. Furthermore, it seamlessly threaded together related communications, creating a cohesive flow that resembled a continuous conversation. Marissa Mayer, a former Google executive who played a key role in the creation of Gmail and other products, shared that the initial pitch revolved around three essential elements storage, search, and speed. Mayer later went on to become the CEO of Yahoo. The concept was so mind-bending that shortly after the Associated Press released an article about Gmail in the late afternoon of April Fool's 2004, readers immediately reached out to the news agency, both calling and emailing, to inform them that they had been tricked by Google's pranksters. During a recent interview with the Associated Press, former Google engineer Paul Buckheit reflected on his endeavour to create Gmail, emphasising the allure of developing a product that appears almost unbelievable. This innovative approach had the power to transform people's perspectives on the capabilities of web browsers and the endless possibilities they hold for various applications. As part of a project known as Caribou, which takes its name from a recurring joke in the Dilbert comic strip, it required a three-year effort. Paul Buchheit, the 23rd individual hired at a company that presently boasts a workforce of over 180,000, found the name Caribou amusing due to its inherent absurdity. The credibility of Google's intentions with Gmail was confirmed when an AP journalist was unexpectedly summoned from San Francisco to the company's headquarters in Mountain View, California. This invitation promised a worthwhile experience that justified the journey. Upon reaching a corporate campus that was still in the process of development, destined to evolve into the renowned Googleplex, the AP reporter was directed to a modest office where Page greeted them with a mischievous smile, seated before his laptop computer. 
At the youthful age of 31, Page proceeded to exhibit the impeccably crafted interface of Gmail and showcased its remarkable speed while functioning seamlessly on Microsoft's now obsolete Explorer web browser. Notably, he drew attention to the absence of a delete button in the primary control window, highlighting the superfluousness of such a feature when Gmail offered ample storage capacity and effortless search capabilities. With unwavering confidence, Page predicted, I firmly believe that individuals will develop a genuine fondness for this innovation. Just as Page predicted, Gmail has proven to be a massive success, with an estimated 1.8 billion active accounts. Each user now enjoys a generous 15 gigabytes of complimentary storage that includes Google Photos and Google Drive. While this is a significant increase from Gmail's original storage capacity, it still falls short for some users who have no inclination to delete any of their emails, just as Google had anticipated. Google, Apple and various other companies have found a lucrative business in selling extra storage space in their data centers due to the increasing trend of digital hoarding. For instance, Google offers storage options ranging from $30 per year for 200 gigabytes to $250 per year for 5 terabytes. Moreover, the very existence of Gmail has influenced other free email services and workplace email accounts to provide significantly more storage capacity than was ever imagined two decades ago. According to Buchheit, our objective was to challenge the long-standing mindset of storage scarcity, as people had been conditioned to default to deleting due to this prevailing model of thinking. By revolutionizing various aspects, Gmail emerged as a pivotal force laying the foundation for Google's internet empire to extend beyond its prevailing search engine. Following the successful launch of Gmail, Google continued its expansion into various areas of technology. Google Maps and Google Docs, which included word processing and spreadsheet applications, quickly followed. The company then made a significant move by acquiring the popular video site YouTube. This was accompanied by the introduction of the Chrome browser and the Android operating system, which now powers the majority of smartphones worldwide. While Gmail gained attention for its innovative features, such as scanning email content to better understand user interests, it also raised concerns about digital surveillance and targeted advertising. Google's ambitions were clearly expanding in this direction, however, Initially, Gmail had a limited reach due to the company's computing capacity, which could only support a small user base. With a laugh, Buchheit reminisced about the early days of the launch, recalling that they were equipped with a mere 300 outdated machines that had been rejected by others. The capacity was so limited that they could only accommodate 10,000 users, which now seems quite ludicrous. The limited availability of Gmail gave it an aura of exclusivity, sparking a frenzy of desire for the elusive invitations required to create an account. At its peak, these invitations were being sold for a staggering dollar 250 each on eBay. It almost became a form of social currency, with people eagerly offering each other Gmail invites, Buckheit explained. As Google's network of massive data centers expanded, signing up for Gmail became progressively simpler. However, it wasn't until 2007 when the company generously opened the floodgates as a Valentine's Day gift to the world that they began accepting all users to the email service. In a playful jest, Google unveiled a new feature called Gmail Paper on April Fool's Day in 2007. This feature allowed users to request the printing of their entire email archive on 94% post-consumer organic soybean sputum and have it delivered via the postal service. It was a light-hearted moment for Google, showcasing their sense of humor. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.